All right, so first question here is we have a lighthouse searchlight 315 meters from the shore. So this is 315. Something that I think would be helpful when you're doing these questions is you really, as you're reading through, as you're drawing your diagram, because you better make a diagram, you're really thinking about what's changing and what's not. Because there's going to be constants, and then there's going to be a couple of things that are changing that you've got to find as your x. Okay, and the lighthouse searchlight is making one revolution every minute. So this is a key to these problems, is what's the rate at which it's spinning. This is what makes it trigonometry. I think I mentioned this yesterday. I talked about how there's several different types of questions that we do that involve triangles and identifying which type of the triangle questions you're working with, like they're one of the options today was a triangle question. Identifying which type of triangle you're working with might be part of the problem, but the fact that we have a changing angle is probably a good indication. Although a ladder falling, the angle changes too, right? But we're not talking about how fast the angle's changing or, or anything like that. So this is talking about how fast the angle's changing. So I'm gonna make that theta, I'm gonna label it obviously. And that's the angle that's changing as the spotlight, let's say, is rotating, rotating this direction. Or whether it's rotating the other direction, I don't know. How fast is the spotlight moving along the wall? A wall on the shore, so this is a wall here. Okay. When the spot is 425 meters from point P. So what else is changing in this question. Well, I suppose the hypotenuse is changing, but we don't, we're, we're not given any information about it. And it says, how fast is the spotlight moving along the wall? So the spotlight is going to be moving along the wall. The spotlight doesn't rotate like this. So this distance is what is changing. Oh, thank you very much. This distance here is what's changing. So we're going to call that one x. Like finding out where your x is is going to be a part of it, right? So it says, what else does it give us here? It gives us... It gives us the speed at which, or the rate at which, theta is changing. One revolution every minute. And it gives us x, and we have to find dx by dt when x equals 425. I think we've got that kind of set up, except for the d theta by dt. One revolution per minute means what? Does it mean that? 360 or 2 pi. So if you're working in, we're going to work in radians as a rule, but absolutely, that's right. We need the actual measurement. So it might give you, it might give you that. Right? Like in radians, it might give you how many revolutions. It might be like two revolutions per minute, and you'd have to turn that into number of radians. It might give you like two thirds of a revolution or three quarters of a revolution or something like that. And again, you'd have to turn that into radians to figure out how many radians are, uh, are being revolutionized. That's not right, but. In a, in, in a minute or a second or whatever it is. John, did you have a question? You sure? All right. So now I think we're good to go. Now we can um, come up with a relationship that relates these 
measurements that we have. What do you think we're going to do to set this up? Anybody have an idea? There's not really a complicated part here. It's straightforward. Your, your intuition or gut would probably point you in the right direction. How, what, what way, like we use Pythagorean theorem to relate the things that are changing in a formula. We used the volume formulas. We used similar triangles. We did all these different things to relate. How can I relate theta and x, the things that are changing? John? Yeah, just can't we just use one of those trig formulas? Which one would I use in this case? Not sine. Tan, because I've got opposite and adjacent. So tan theta is x over 315. And that's what we're going to take the derivative of. Does anybody remember what the derivative of tan is? Luckily, you all probably remember sine and cosine. One of them has a negative, one, is, one of them doesn't. And probably the only other one you need to know is tan. So once you relearn it now, anybody want to guess? Who's got a hunch? No. Was it that long ago? I don't think so. Secant squared. So now I want to know, was anybody thinking secant squared? Yeah, see, I always, I know it. You just don't want to answer because you're not sure. All right. And then secant squared, theta. d theta by dt. So this is like 1 over 315 times x. So it's 1 over 315 dx by dt, right? A lot of these questions work out to tan. Not all, but a lot of them do. And a lot of them are kind of set up the same way. And a lot of them derivative looks a lot like that. So like I say, kind of formulaic. Not always. And what can I sub in here? I know d theta by dt is 2 pi. I don't know dx by dt, but that's what we're trying to find. So of course, I don't know that. Secant squared theta. Hmm. We don't know that, do we? So what can we do? This is another one of the tricks to these problems is we got to do a little bit of work to figure that out. We could solve for theta at that moment. Yeah. Yeah, because we have x. Like in this equation up here, we have x at that moment. So we could find theta at that moment. It's going to be nasty. There's another way we can do it if we need an exact value. Uh, it's going to be nasty, but if you kept it on your calculator and your memory, you could probably get away with that. But this is a good little trick as well. So let's say, well, let me, okay, yeah, I can do this uh, like this. Okay. So this is 315 and this is 425. So what's the hypotenuse? No. How'd you get that? 529 exactly? Oh, okay. How did you, uh, how'd you do it? What'd you put into your calculator? Okay, good. So that's the part that I wanted because let's do an exact value here because that's kind of the point, which is the square root of, so what, what's the exact value when you add those together? Do you have that, John? Or if not, do you want to do it for us? Okay, good. That's what I have to. 279,850. Square root of that. Let's leave it like that. Let's not round it. And let's see. Secant theta, which is equal to 1 over cos theta. And, if, and cosine is, back from grade 10, adjacent over hypotenuse. So the reciprocal of that is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So secant theta is going to be the square root of that silly number 
over 315, the adjacent. Now I have a value for that that I can sub in over here. Square it because it was secant squared. And I got about 5,582 meters per minute. Five and a half kilometers every minute. Pretty fast. If you picture, picture like the second hand on a clock. I think we talked about this a little bit in MHF, didn't we? Um, so what, it takes about somewhere around one minute to go all the way around once, right? Second hand on a clock. Um, so picture two points on that second hand, one at the very end of it and one near the inside of it. And think about the distance that they travel, the actual physical distance. The point on the outside travels a lot farther, right, than the point on the inside, but they're rotating at the same speed, so their rotational speed is the same, but their distance through space and their speed through space is different. That makes sense? So think about this point, because this the length of this arm, this rotational arm, is changing. If we think about it as the length from the light to the spot, right? So when the spot is close into P, it's going to be at its shortest. The light will be moving more slowly, don't you think? When it gets out here or when it gets further, it's going to be moving really, really fast. Doesn't that make sense? interesting to think about that you you could in questions like this get answers that vary you could get like really fast speeds and you might think I've done something wrong not necessarily if it's very far out there and it's all I think it's always good to think about what's happening visualize what's happening and um, it, it helps you connect with it. It helps you make intuitions, draw the triangle correctly, think about what's changing, interpret your answer correctly. All those good things. Balloon rises into the air from a point on the ground 100 meters away from an observer. Okay, so I've got a balloon... And it's rising from a point on the ground that's 100 meters away. So this is 100. And I'm thinking is it true that that part's not changing? The angle between the observer's line of sight and the ground increases at a rate of 1 20th radians per second. So that's already in radians per second. That's not 1 20th of a revolution. 
See how this is different from the last question. So that looks like that's going there. That's my theta. Determine the vertical velocity of the balloon when theta is pi by 4. So again, that's giving us a different... Uh, it's giving us some different information from the last question. So if I call this H, find the vertical velocity, we're finding dH by dt when theta equals, what is it, pi by 4? Pi by 4. And we're given d theta by dt. One t over 20 radians per second. Okay, you try to do the next step from here. So we're going to go with tan again. Tan theta is h over 100. So secant squared theta d theta by dt equals 1 over 100 dh by dt. What do we need to find? Yeah, overall we need to find dh by dt. So before we can find that, what do we need? We need secant theta. And this one's going to look a bit different because of what we're given. Okay, so I want you to try. I want to see if you can think about a way that we can do that. I'm going to give you a minute to think about a way that we can find secant.
What do you think? Who has an idea? Yeah? Why not? Last time we didn't have theta. We were given something else. We were given H. Well, this wasn't H, but we were given the equivalent to H, right? So we decided to use Pythagorean theorem. Could we just use theta? That's one way we could do it. Emma, is that what you did too? Okay. Did anybody think of another way that you could do it? If you did it like we did the last question, it would be roundabout, but it would work out the same way. I could, I could still use this. So I could do tan theta, which is pi by four. Sorry, so I want to put that in. Tan of pi by four is equal to h over 100. So uh, this is uh, 100 times the tan of pi by four. Tan of pi by four is one. So h is equal to 100. And then I could use that to find the hypotenuse and then use that to find something for secant, but it works out to the same. So what is, does, does anybody have the exact value of secant pi by four? Whoops, secant of pi by four is equal to one over cos of pi by four. What's cos of pi by four? One over root two. So this is just equal to root two. Okay, easy enough. I got 10, so the balloon is rising at 10 meters per second. Any questions about that one? All right, let's try another one. But I'm going to get you to, there, there's nothing really different about this one, so go ahead and give it a try.
remember the first step might just be identifying variables, drawing your graph, labeling it properly, and deciding what you're finding and like what you're gonna call it. Not just what you're finding, I mean it says right there. Uh, how fast is the angle of elevation of the observer's line of sight to helicopter increasing? What is that in your formulas, in your equations, algebraically, what's that gonna look like? You identify that And the if the observer is over here, then this is theta. So what am I going to find? D theta by dt. Another trick that can help you think through these things is whatever equation you're going to uh, take the derivative of has to have variables in it for all the things that are changing. So theta is changing and h is changing. I put an x over here for a reason that we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, it's changing too, but I don't need that part of the relationship, so I don't, I'm not worried about x. But I can't sub in yet. Like even we know h, but I, I can't put h in yet, right? I have to take the derivative first. We, so now that I know it's tan, I know it's going to be secant. What do we have to do? We need to find the value of secant. Anybody find the value of secant? Theta? I know you did because I saw you. Yep. 5 over 4. How'd you get that? Yeah, so if I figure out x, h is 60, uh, this bottom one is 80, so x works out to 100. And if you're not sure where we got that from Pythagorean theorem, right? Okay, and then secant theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, which is 100 over 80, so that's 5 over 4. And now we can just go ahead and do this. Secant squared theta d theta by dt equals 1 over 80 dh by dt. So 5 over 4 squared What does this work out to? Does anybody have that answer? Alex, do you have it? 0 0.02. 0 .02. And that should be radians per second. Therefore, the person's line of sight is in the angle of elevation.
the person's line of sight is increasing at 0 0.02 radians per second. Any questions about that? How'd that feel? Hopefully, you know, there are definitely some steps involved, but you can see how you got to think about the rotational part of it. it can make it a bit more complicated. <laughs> 